Hi everyone, my name is Sasha. Thanks for being here today. We are going to do a little psoas release practice. I'm also going to call this a stress release practice because often the psoas or the hip flexor muscle muscles are affiliated with stress. If you think about it, it is when we tense up or flex these muscles when we're cold or afraid or sad or when we have digestive issues. So these muscles that are attached to the top of the thigh, they even go into the lower back lumbar spine and into also the abdominal area. It can create a lot of discomfort and that can just deepen the dis-ease that we're feeling when we have a tight psoas. So this was for a friend who requested some information and some guidance on her own so as issues and so I thought I would create this very simple sequence that you could do at home with just a few things if you have them on hand to help create some relief and some release for you. You can do it while you're traveling or when you're not feeling well. It's a very nice and sweet sequence of postures. So we're going to start on the mat. You can have um, a block or something similar, a strap or something similar. I have a blanket that I'm going to roll up and this pillow or bolster. It's a big couch cushion um, that's a little bit longer. You can use two pillows as well. So take the blanket or whatever you have, fold it really nicely so it's long and then roll it. I'm going to roll mine all the way because this is a thin blanket. And this is going to depend on your body, on what feels good to you. So you're going to sit in child's pose. If you have issues with your knees, you can put a pillow or two underneath your butt on top of your heels so that your pelvis is lifted and it can descend naturally. And the big toes will be together. The knees will be apart just enough to fit the torso, so not a huge opening of the knees. And you'll pull the blanket back so it's tightly rolled. It's right on top of the thighs. The hands are on the outer hips. And you pull it back so the belly's going to come up and over the blanket roll. So when you go up and forward, you kind of pull the blanket roll back. Oh, yeah. And it releases the abdominal, releases the abdominal muscles. And then once you're kind of here in this position, you can reach your arms forward when you're ready. And again, press the hands gently forward so the arms elongate. Oh, I feel it already. And let the butt go down towards the heels. And then you can let the head come down. If the head can't come down naturally, you can put a block under the forehead or a pillow. I think my head can come down, so I'm just going to enjoy this here. And you'll just be here for a few breaths. Remember that you can always come up and either lessen the blanket roll, like make it a little bit less thick, or you can roll it more. So do your best to release the abdominals. This is not a good idea if you've just eaten <laughs> or if you just drank something. So maybe consider this on an empty-ish stomach. Let your belly and your back relax. This also releases the back muscles. They're all interconnected. And do invigorate the arms just enough so that the side of the waist here is long. So a few more breaths. I often feel a release in my shoulders here after I hold this for a while because, again, all of these muscles are interrelated. So do your, breaths to breathe calm, do your best to breathe calmly in and out of the nose. A couple more moments. Let the butt go back naturally, reach through the arms. Let your breath be gentle. Hmm. Okay. To come up, of course you can stay longer if you need, but to come up, bring your hands back and press yourself up so the head can come last. Oh yeah. And just put your hands on your lap for a moment and take a breath. Notice if you feel any difference, I certainly do. And just put the blanket roll aside. We'll use it later. We're going to come onto the back so that the feet are the same direction as the head. Or that's the way I'm doing it anyways for this sequence today. So have your strap now. We'll use that and start to come down onto your back. Just bend the knees, put the feet down, and come on down to the back. Take your hair out if you need to so that your head is easily on the floor. 
And just bring your feet as close to your butt as you can so the knees point up, the feet are hip width apart. And just take a breath here. If you want, you can open the feet for a moment, let the knees knock in, put the hands on the belly, and let the torso relax and widen. So the collarbones widen, the abdomen widens, and you're breathing calmly. And then bring the feet hip width apart and take the strap. Just undo it so it can come around the right foot. You can also use like a scarf or a towel or a t-shirt. So it's right by the toes. And just extend the heel straight up to the ceiling. And as you press the foot up, you kind of gently just keep your hands gripped on either side. So the arms are straight, but you're not pulling with your elbows. The arms are more passive here. The, this is an active pose. Um, it helps to stabilize the sacrum. And the, that is also in relation to the psoas. So as you extend this right thigh up, press the thigh away from the belly. So you can see dramatically the right outer hip goes away from the right armpit. This right foot is active, so the toes are curling down and the thigh is pressing away. Do your best to keep this leg straight as you extend this left leg. So the left leg is actually extending the psoas, but it's with an active, a more active posture. And the right leg is helping to stabilize the sacrum. As you're pushing up, there's a natural pull down just by the weight of the shoulders kind of dropping into the socket here. And as this, in the same way, the right femur bone drops naturally down into the hip socket. And you are actively bringing this right outer hip away from the armpit and extending actively through the left heel and the right heel. So it's like you could press this left thigh down, you could press this right thigh forward, and you're breathing calmly. There's a lot of length and release in the belly and the left psoas, even though the leg is active. And there's that nice placement of the sacrum from the right femur just naturally coming down into the right uh, hip. Let's take one more breath here, reach through the heels more, relax the belly. And then bend the left knee and then the right knee and just put the feet down and take a breath here for a moment. So sometimes active, semi-active postures can also be really therapeutic. So we'll just do the other side. So you just take the strap to the left foot near the toes and extend it up. Reach to the heel. Do your best to press this left thigh forward so there's some activity. Curl the toes down. The left outer hip moves away from the left armpit. And when you're ready... Do your best to keep this top leg straight. The arms are passive here and straight, and you extend the right leg forward. So the legs are quite active. You're pressing the right thigh down, especially the inner leg. And in the same way, you're pressing the left thigh forward so the pelvis is equal, and this left femur, the top of the thigh bone, can drop naturally into the pelvis, into that hip joint, and you're relaxing the belly so the right psoas is lengthened, the right side of the body is long. Do your best to keep the collarbones wide and the breath calm. Just a few more breaths. This is Supta Parangustasana A, or Supine. Para is foot, Gusta is fingers. Eventually, the fingers take the toes. Gustasana A. Reach further with the heels and then bend the right knee, foot down, left knee, foot down. Take a breath, drop the strap. You can widen your feet a little, knees in, breathe. Hmm. Of course, you can hold that longer if you need. Just roll to the side. You're going to put this bolster or pillow on your back in the same line as your spine. So roll to one side so you can do that as calmly as possible. You're going to put whoop, the bolster right behind you and bring it kind of behind your butt so you're sitting in front of it. This is a Supta Baddha Konasana with a bolster support. So put your hands, there is a little bit of space between the pelvis, the butt, and the edge of the pillow. Put your hands on it so you can press it down. This is going to come into the lumbar spine so that when you lower down, it's nice in the natural curve of the back. Oh yeah, and you lower all the way down. And you can bring your arms out to the side here, just move anything that's in the way and tuck your shoulders a little bit in underneath you so that the torso is nicely placed. Bring the feet in close, the feet together and the knees open, and we'll rest here for a few breaths. So, 
As your torso releases, let the abdomen soften and widen with each exhale, and that will widen the pelvic area, sometimes, again, where those psoas muscles can tighten. So even though the legs are still in flexion here, they're not elongated, there is a bend at the top of the thigh. There is a widening and a release in the belly and the front of the pelvis and the inner thigh and a lot of those muscles that are interconnected that can often cause tension and discomfort in the so as the hip flexor area. So just enjoy this for a few breaths. If you want, you can take opposite elbows overhead, especially if you have space behind your head. If you're really uncomfortable in your neck, you can always lift your head up and put um, a nicely folded blanket or a small pillow under your head. I really like this clasp of the elbows because it creates a lot of length and releases the belly a little bit more by uh, elongating the side of the body. And if you've got one side, make sure you switch halfway through. Of course, you can stay here longer. This You can even stay for like 10 minutes if you want. If you have a lot of knee pain you can or hip pain, you can always put blocks under your knees. This is great for uh, times during menstruation or when you also have digestive issues. This is really nice and calming. Also good for stress relief. One more breath. You can do this in bed with some pillows. Supine bound angle pose, Supta Baddha Konasana with some support. So you gently take the hands to the thighs. Of course, stay longer if you need. Press the knees up and you're just gonna roll slowly over to the side. And we're gonna stay on the back, but press yourself up and bring yourself towards a wall with a block towards the wall. This is gonna go under your feet for um, Situ Bandha Sarvangasana. It's a supported long um, shoulder stand, restorative shoulder stand. So when you're at the wall, you can measure by putting your feet against the wall. I'm going to move this for a moment. And when your feet are against the wall, you're going to measure where your shoulders are, kind of actually where the bottom tips of the shoulder blades are with the prop. So I measured there. I'm going to come up and put it more in the center of my mat because my whole body is going to go on this pillow except for my shoulder blades. So I'm going to come up and sit and just kind of scoop my butt towards the edge so that I can put my feet up against the wall, or maybe just one foot, and just kind of slide myself off. Make sure I'm a good measurement. Yep, that feels good. So that this kind of hooks at the bottom part of my shoulder blades and I can put my arms to the side in this cactus shape and I'm really on top of my shoulder tips so I am walking you can even elongate your arms my bolster is just a little wide so I'm going to do cactus so I'm going to walk my arms in a little bit my shoulders in so that I'm right on top of my shoulders and the shoulder blades kind of naturally press into the collarbones and widen them I'm going to separate my feet hip width apart, just almost even about the width of the block. You can always lower the block if you need. I think this is good for me here. And I'm just going to breathe. And this is so nice. It's so soothing. It elongates the psoas muscles that can often feel very cramped. And just let yourself rest in this shape so you soften the belly. You are a little bit active through the legs, so there's a little bit of pressure and length through the heels, kind of like in that Supta Padangustasana shape. Notice also how I'm not moving my head at all. Please don't move your head, as I said that, if you are doing the pose with me. And again, let your exhalation kind of drop your belly down and wide. The collarbones are naturally wide. This is also beneficial for the thyroid, this nice compression here where the thyroid gland is. It's connected to our lymphatic system, our kind of garbage disposal, drainage system. So this is really soothing for that, which is tied to our physical and mental health, our hormones, our hormonal health. And all the while, you're lengthening the psoas. Just one more breath here. Of course, you can stay longer if you need. Hmm. And then slowly bend one knee and then the other, and you'll roll slowly to the right side of the body to come off of the bolster. 
Press yourself up. And we'll do one more on the back. So make sure you have some space for your legs. And we're going to lay down again and use the bolster. Bring your feet towards your butt. These are all really slow transitions as well. So when you're on your butt, you'll eventually take this bolster underneath boop, for a supported bridge pose. If this is too soft for you, you can use blocks. This is quite wide, but I want it more or less under my pelvis. So it's going to come into my lumbar spine just because it's long. But if you're doing this, you just want to make sure that your pelvis is neutral so you're not rolling or uh, arching your back. And then extend the arms alongside as best you can. I'm even going to tuck my forearms underneath here and tuck my shoulders in just like we did in the Sichibanda Sarvangasana shape, in the one before. And then if this feels nice for you, you can stay and just let your femurs, the top of the thighs, drop into the pelvis here. Or you can extend the legs kind of like the width of the mat. And then just let them relax. Oh, yeah, in this shape. So this is like a very, very gentle... Um, almost back bend. And if you feel again, like you're really well on top of your shoulders, you can cactus your elbows out to the side of your shoulders and let the collarbones widen out into the elbows. Again, let the whole front of the body soften and widen. If this is too much for you, you don't have to take it. You can just lay on your back or you can take one of the other postures or stay longer in the other postures. This can sometimes feel really intense. Sometimes it's not intense at all, especially if you're quite flexible in your spine. If you are quite flexible in your spine, I challenge you to stay a little bit lower to the ground. And just depending on the day, it might change for you. You might want to give yourself a little bit more height, like you can heighten the block or use two blocks if you're using that under your sacrum. It's a little triangle right above your butt. So you're Again, mostly on your pelvis here, so the pelvis can remain as neutral as possible. You're just letting your legs be as they are. You're not trying to do anything with your legs here. You can elongate the heels a little bit and then let them just be. And take one more breath. Relax the eyes. Again, you can stay longer if you need. First, extend the arms to come out of this. Oh, it feels so nice. And then bend one foot and then the other. Put the feet down and then lift the butt up. Slide the pillow out of the way and just pause here for a moment take a breath hmm. so you have two options for the end well let's do um legs up the wall first so you can roll to the side and then again we'll just be here for a few moments i don't think i need this anymore so i'm going to put my bolster away just to the side and scoot my mat a little bit closer to the wall because I'm going to swing my legs up the wall. So I'm going to come all the way up against the wall. Sometimes you can use a prop under your pelvis. Right now I'm just going to use nothing so I can show you that it's accessible anywhere. So you'll just really come to the side and bring your butt up against the wall or a bureau in my case. And once your butt is like right up against the wall and in a little bit of a fetal shape here, you're just going to roll up. Maybe I'm going to scoot my butt a little bit away from the wall. That feels better for me. So I can extend my legs up. And again, I like my elbows in a cactus shape. That feels nice for me here. So what I was saying is that sometimes you can um, make almost like what we were doing with the bolster in that last shape with, um, you can have that underneath your pelvis here so that your butt kind of tips into the wall and your legs extend up. You just don't want your pelvis to roll so that the sacrum is as equalized as possible. So as your legs are up, they're not really doing anything here. They're just naturally falling down into the hip flexors. So you don't want to tighten your hip flexors here or the muscles of the abdomen, you want them to remain soft and wide. So if you are feeling like you're tensing your abdomen or your psoas, your hip flexors here, you can just come out of this pose and lay on your back or do one of the other postures. But this is meant to really pacify the nervous system, pacify the legs as they just naturally plug down into the hip socket. So it's a less active posture here. 
And again, just a few more breaths, but you can certainly stay here for longer, even up to like 10 minutes. It might feel really nice if you need to strap your, uh, the middle of the thighs together. It can help to create some stability in your legs so you can really relax them in this shape and you don't feel like you have to hold anything up. Let your eyes relax. Just take one more breath. It's called Viparita Karani. Legs up the wall. And then slowly to come out, you come out the same way. So bend the knees, slide the heels down. It might be nice to stay here for a moment and actually give yourself a little hug and relax the belly. Relax the thighs into the belly. Oh yeah, it does feel nice. That little bit of compression into the belly can feel really nice, almost like a little massage for the organs and the muscles there. So do your best to really release the belly and the thighs here so you're not pushing the belly upward but releasing it with the breath. And then slowly roll to the side and press yourself up. And the last final pose is final resting pose for now anyways. So I'm gonna give you two options. You can lie down on the back with a rolled blanket underneath your legs or a bolster. This is quite big, but you could put this underneath. Let's see if I can slide this in underneath your legs. Sometimes you can even tilt it up so that your heels can come down on the floor and rest the arms by the side. This pillow doesn't really work for me and I'm actually gonna take um, Shavasana on my belly. So I'll show you what that looks like. If you're very comfortable with something under your knees, you can stay there. Otherwise, you can come onto the belly and I'll show you what that looks like with a blanket roll underneath the belly for your final rest. So this is gonna go in my abdomen. So I'm just gonna come up and over it. So this is, it's right above the front hip points. And again, you can make it as small or as big as you want um, in terms of the size of the roll. Oh yeah, this feels great. And make sure it's a little bit lower. So it's again, kind of right, almost like where the belly button is. It might be different for everybody. And just put your hands under your forehead and this is a prone Shavasana. It also releases the back muscles, it feels really nice. And let your elbows widen and your armpits widen. So we'll just take a few breaths here. This is one of my favorites. You can even do this without anything under the belly. You can just lay on the belly and it does release the front of the body in a very passive and soft way. Think of the front and the back of the body releasing down and wide as you exhale. So you're not pushing or forcing anything but you're really just allowing your body to kind of flow with the breath. The muscles, the joints, the organs, maybe even the thoughts. Just cultivating a sense of softness. So all that tension that can accumulate in the hip flexors and around that area and within that area, like the organs, you can just consider what it feels like to be spacious and soft, maybe to release or at least have the intention of releasing and relieving that area or wherever it feels tight in your body today. Last breath here. Stay longer if you need. And to come up, roll to one side. Even if you're on your belly, it might feel actually really nice to roll onto the side of the body too with that blanket roll there. And use your arms to press yourself up to a comfortable seat. And just pause for a moment in a seat, wherever you are. You can close your eyes. If you are in a seat and it feels tight in your hip flexors, you can elevate your seat by sitting on something so that your legs can just fall into this shape naturally. Sit up a little bit taller. Bring the hands together at the center of the chest and thank yourself for showing up for yourself in this way today, for taking time to pay attention to yourself and to relieve any discomfort you might be feeling. 
Namaste. Thank you.